How are you, Teresa? I am good. How are you? Great. Uh, how is Ryan doing at this point? Good. You know, progressing. And, you know, a lot of guys, uh, you know, day after the game and they're getting treatment. So we'll continue to evaluate all those guys and see where we are on Wednesday. If he's limited or, or can't go for a day or two, how much harder is it to not have that guy at that position versus maybe some other positions for practice? Well, I mean, I think we, we need everybody. Um, you know, the quarterback, you know, is vital to the execution. And we'll continue to see where Ryan is and, and we'll get everybody ready that we feel like needs to get ready. Is there a chance at a, at a lighter week in general with, with everybody you got dinged up? Sure, yeah. Always trying to do those things and always looking at the schedule and trying to figure out what's best for the football team and what we need at this point in time and how we continue to try to improve. Uh, we've had a lot of different schedules and, you know, the time that I've had an opportunity to, to be here, um, just circumstances of a short week or you know, a bunch of injuries or COVID or being away. So you know, we'll always try to, you know, figure out a way to make them, you know, get prepared, but, you know, just being smart. How do you evaluate uh, Malik, uh, what, what you've seen from him in practice uh, so far? Well, I mean, I think he's continued to improve. He's taken the, you know, the, the, the ownership of, of the show team, and that's where every backup quarterback gets their reps. Um, but still understanding the game plan and still being ready to go. And um, so I kind of like where that, that's been the last couple of weeks. I thought it was you know, maybe the first week of the season was something that was new, new for him. And, and we had a uh, conversation about how he, he needs to operate and you know, get those guys to, to function, whether it's you know, preparing for the next week's game. So I think it's been, been good. Talked a lot about Ryan's toughness yesterday, but to be able to finish in game and, and kind of step up and make a big throw to Austin late, how important was that? And would he one of those guys who refused to not finish? Yeah, I mean, it would be hard to keep some of those guys from, from trying to go back in and doing everything that they possibly can um, to help the football team. You know, Ryan is just, you know, one example of that, of, of many. Um, but he certainly had all intentions of doing everything that he could to get back there. And, you know, with any injury, we've, we've been through this as, as it relates to us, is how we um, identify if guys can continue to play. Uh, can they make it worse? Are they going to be able to reasonably do their job? And can they up to the expectations that we have for them? And can they, um, can, when they, can they protect themselves? So, you know, when he was able to progress through, big throw. But you know, the few times that we needed to progress, uh, the line gave us that opportunity, you know, so that was also really good to see. And then, you know, Brian was able to get the ball down there to few, um, hoop late. The use, of Malik as, the use of Malik out wide a couple mm -hmm. of times and on the aborted handoff, was that more product of being shorthanded at the wide receiver position and putting him there or just trying to put a new wrinkle in and add something else? To the I offense? think probably a little bit of both, you know, wanting to make sure that, you know, we're doing things that, that we think can, can help us and, you know, Malik's ability. So we'll see what kind of where that package goes. And, you know, thought we had a good play. Thought, thought we really liked, um, you know, where things were and, and what it would look like. And unfortunately, we just weren't able to execute on that particular play. But, you know, we'll try to keep doing things that we feel like, you know, can help us and, and his skill set and <clears throat> seeing where things go. Talk about how proud you are to coach the guys on this team. When you see a bunch of your stars picking themselves off the turf and getting back into the game and helping you win in the manner you did yesterday. Was yesterday on the near the top of the list of how proud you've been? Probably, yeah. You know, you just uh, – you know, I don't think what, that people realize what, what they go through, whether, you know, they start in college or you end up in as a professional athlete, the toll that this game takes and, you know, what it can give you, but also, you know, what it can take away from you. And they, they put a lot in and they compete. It's it's violent, and uh, you know, just really, you know, got a lot of respect for for I would say the majority of these guys that that are finding ways um, no matter what, and just each and every week, far less than a hundred percent during the game, things come up and they get evaluated, uh, and, and you can just tell that uh, it means a lot to them. So um, I'm grateful to to be able to to work with them each every day. Well, but the line, free. I saw you said share a moment, Jones, Mike, with, uh, ben, with Ben Jones in the tunnel yesterday. Along the, what'd you say to him? I mean, I think you know, obviously, these things aren't. Um, I, I I just appreciate them, and those that'll that'll stay between me and Ben. 
you know, but, um, you know, I just, it, 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 you, you come to work every day, you hear a lot of hours, and uh, you get a lot of respect for guys, the way they are as people, the way they are as teammates and players and parents and husbands. And so, you know, to be able to see what it means to these guys, it's not just another game. It's not just a paycheck. Um, so I just really appreciate what they do. With Bud Dupree, he said that he plays – with so much energy because it's contagious and he wants to create other opportunities. When you see him in the game, like, can you feel a difference in the energy level? And if so, why is that? Well, I mean, I think that uh, we, we all expect to play hard, whether Bud's in there or not. And, you know, we appreciate Bud's effort and he does run to the football. But, you know, Jeff Simmons been running to the football. He makes three or four plays down the field. Um, that, that's the expectation for defensive football is that you, that you play full tilt to the tackle whenever you're in there. Um, so it was good to have Bud back out there. Uh, but uh, you know, we're, we're going ex- to we're gonna expect to play hard on defense with whoever's out there. Does would, Bud allow you to do more things or just do things better? Um, I don't think it allows us to do things. You know, we don't want to do a whole lot much. You know what I mean? we got a lot of moving parts. And you know, I think where we're at right now is guys starting to understand what we're doing. We didn't give up X plays. Um, a couple of times we gave up leverage, but there are a couple of times we were in man coverage and we were really tight. And then the zone execution, I thought, was much better than it was in, in previous weeks. What did Monty do, maybe in a different role in the package you used with him and Andrew Deep? How'd that, how'd that work? Yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was good. I thought he uh, you know, represented himself well in what we asked him to do on, on early downs. And then you know, he lost leverage on the one um, with Pittman. But... I think with with time and understanding, you know, I would see him being able to to make that play. But you know, his versatility is is great. We'll see where he ends up this week. How much big an adjustment is that for right? him to to move in? Move, how big an adjustment is that for him to move down into the slot like that? Uh, well, I think you'd have to ask Amani um, because it didn't from from the looks of things. Again, this isn't me saying that it's easy or not. It's just from the looks of things, he looked like he handled. Um, you know, what we were asking them to do fairly well from a communication and an execution. Um, so I think that that would have to be a great question for him just to say, you know, but a, going into the game, I think whether he played there or not, he would be able to tell you what the corner had, what the nickel had, and what the safety has uh, pretty much on every call that we have. On the coaching end of that, when you guys come up with that and, and install it during the week and then see it work successfully, I, I, not, not how gratifying it is, but how much fun is that part of the job to kind of craft something and then see it come to fruition? Well, I think what's gratifying is that you're, you you see improvement um, from players. That's where coaches get the satisfaction. You know, you try to spend uh, countless hours, you know, thinking about technique, thinking about, hey, you know, how would I do this? How would we expect the player to reasonably do this? Um, they They use the technique. It works. They... They have success, you know, you continue to build small victories and then, then you can make significant changes because there's buy-in. And you know, when players see improvement, they know that you can help them and that they trust you, you know, and then we're all working on the same page. But, you know, we, we don't sit around and, and, and pat ourselves on the back. Um, that's not what we're about. We're trying to help the players and make sure that we're putting them in positions to help them succeed and they go out and execute. Beyond, Rand- Beyond Randy being four for four on field goals, was yesterday maybe one of the better all-around days for special teams? It seemed like that the coverage units won the field position battle. Yeah, the they part. did. I think we could punt better. I think we could cover punts better. I didn't like some of those longer returns. Um, but we ran down there on kickoff with speed. Unfortunately, we had the penalty uh, on kickoff return. So it's probably you're giving it probably a little better review than maybe I am. Um, but Randy, it was, that was great to see. Um, you know, we had one good return with with Hassan, who continues to run hard back there and break some arm tackles. And just unfortunate that you know we start with with the penalty. So um, there's a lot of things to improve on. But I appreciate your optimism. You think that's right. the zone, you went to the zone execution was uh, better yesterday. Why? Why did it improve? Well, because we didn't get the ball thrown over our head, or we weren't covering guys at three or four yards. There was some instances in the first game uh, where we were, you know, just jumping down on things and 
you know, giving them some some easy throws over our head, and you know, we forced the ball to be thrown in front. And you know, when the longest play is is 20 yards, um, and the next couple are 14, you make them earn it, which then it opens up more opportunities for us to affect the quarterback or knock the football out or intercept it. But when you have these long, explosive plays, it changes field position. You know, now they're in the red zone and. You know, they're in their scheme plays and everything else. So that was probably just, you know, forcing them to throw it underneath and, and be able to break and tackle and, and go from there. So like individual improvement, just not making mistakes or communication collectively? That was no, I think just overall understanding of, you know, what it is that, that has to happen in each coverage. You know, the coverage understanding and, you know, again, they on the touchdown, on Andrew's touchdown, there was, there was great communication. I think Kevin... Uh, made a check, and you could see guys quickly uh, get into position. Uh, the ball was then snapped, and uh, then ultimately they executed uh, the call. So that's, I think, a great example of you know being able to adjust and the, the players communicating, getting lined up, and then ultimately executing the play for a big play. Take away the, the kneel down. You guys ran Derek 15 of 19 second down. So you say, hey. We won, and that worked. That's our identity. Or do you say, "Hey, in high, you know, going forward, we need to mix it up"? Uh, we're going to try to do whatever we can do to win the football game each and every week. That's that's what I would continue to say. Uh, moving Amani down into the slot kind of helped Roger go outside a little bit more. What was your assessment of him kind of making that adjustment, taking majority of his snaps outside? I thought it was okay. I thought it was, you know, fairly competitive. Um, Lost the leverage on the one inside, but that wasn't like he was playing outside. He went in and stabbed uh, the ball from Pierce on the strike. Uh, didn't swat at it, didn't foul him, was, was square at the top, and you know, went through and did what we coach him to do. The ball yesterday, and obviously it paid off at the end for Terrence. Where, where's the balance on that with, with making the tackle and, and punching away at it? Well, I think every time what you go to make a tackle, you have to figure out what position you're in. You know, are you in an open field tackle where the objective is just to get them on the ground? And if you ask any of our players in an open field situation, the clear objective is to find a way to get them on the on the ground and not cause a fumble. And not we don't need a big hit. We we need to make sure that he ends up on the ground. Or is it a vice tackle? Are you working with another player? Uh, and and then you want to come inside out, and the first guy is going to keep his angle and the second guy in is going to try to hammer at the ball. Uh, is it a defensive lineman that's chasing from inside out? Um, or is it a box tackle, you know, where, you know, there's not a whole lot of space and, you know, you're in between the tackles. So there's a lot of different uh, situations. You know, I think you see us work in the open field. Um, but when there's another guy around and you're in a vice tackle situation, we, we really want you, you know, trying to focus on the football. And kill somebody at some point. I mean, he's he's throwing haymakers at the football. Out there. Well, I I know that they're you know him him and Jeff were were running down there uh, chasing the football and you know we just have to hope that it continues to, to maybe it comes out. How much Robert Woods has has made the most of his opportunities and have you seen him make some tough catches uh, across the middle of, in the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean I think Robert is. Um, Doing you know everything that we asked him to do, it felt like he was open on on the strike. Uh, Ryan saw you know, thought that there was a little bit of traffic, so he progressed through and hit Cody for our longest gain of the day. Um, I thought he blocked well. Uh, you know, Ryan pulled it and, and he was protecting the quarterback um, and, and did have some some tough catches in in traffic. You know, talked to him about reaching the ball. You know, I don't think we need to do that, but. Uh, you know, being able to take the contact and 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 being in, being available over the middle is certainly a uh, a good a great quality. Raiders Raiders show product. Yeah. How did Raiden's do uh, in his start yesterday versus compared to his start two weeks ago against Washington? I mean, I think it was about the same. I, I don't you know I think well, there were some plays that you know that need to be better. You know, there they there are there are some plays there that. You know, we, we would expect him to be able to make and be able to adjust to. Um, but then there were other plays where he was, you know, was good. He helped us in a run game and or he replaced his hands and you know, had the had the penalty, which, you know, that isn't something that we're looking for, but is going to happen. And I'm sure he was geared up, ready to go. But we just have to fix those things and, 
you know, make sure that they don't hurt us the next time. Were you going to snap it down there when he when he jumped? Guess we'll never know, Jim. <laughs> Any uh, practice windows opening this week, Mike? Uh, Elijah or anyone else? It's only Monday, so I don't. No, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Hopefully, Sobert, uh, I guess. Uh, Elevated three times. What's kind of been your eval on him, and, and do you see him as a guy that might get, you know, signed permanently? Or? Uh, we would have most of the week to decide that. Um, but I think he's done what we've asked him to do: is um, play a couple different positions, which he has. He's played on the edge for us, played inside, helped us on some special teams, and you know. So we'll see where it is on as the week progresses, and see who's available, and see who we. We need for the game. What made Eric Smith appealing? Um, same thing. A lot of guys that come in and have a good workout, and you know, continuing to add some players at positions that uh, we want to try to get some depth at. Your, te your technique on the challenge flag throw was that one of confidence? You knew, knew you were probably going to win it. Have you got any good feedback on that? Um, no, no, I have not not much feedback. Um, my, I, haven't, I don't get a chance to do it that often, right? So I want to try to do something different each time. Um, I looked out. I saw Ron. I didn't want to throw it at Ron. Um, and I just felt like I saw Max there, who, by the way, those two officials in the second half uh, on our sidelines, um, that, that was really good officiating. Keith and Max, and Max was a rookie. Um, I felt like the communication was, was excellent throughout the entire second half, and those two worked well together. Keith's a veteran, um, but I just, you know, I wanted everybody to know. I just felt like the, the way they two worked together and the communication that they had on our sidelines um, was really good. Like a mic drop? It sounds like a mic drop, right? No, it was just kind of wanted to see, you know, me and Max was there, and I just wanted to make sure that they, they saw it. Feel weird to be going to Houston in October rather than the end of the season? No, not a, no. They hadn't really given that much thought, Teresa. I just look at the next game. It says at Houston, and then figure out what time we're going to leave, where we're going to stay, uh, and kind of go from there. But the date, date doesn't really mean a whole lot. Weather is going to be 72, no wind. My guess. That's there. You go. Roof will be closed.